Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for finding us in our new home at our new time slot. We appreciate your persistence and perseverance. And as I joked, uh, we do have a repeat tomorrow. So if you enjoy today's session, feel free to come back, bring your friends, bring your colleagues, your coworkers, your neighbors in the booth, whomever you run into, tell them to come because this is gonna blow your mind. Who knew that Salesforce and AWS were partners? Did anybody know about that relationship? So I'm here primarily to tell you a little bit about why is Salesforce at reInvent and how Salesforce and AWS collaborate. I am joined today. So my name is Angelos Kotis. I'm a senior director uh, on the Salesforce platform team, a Salesforce App Cloud. I'm joined today by Eric. You want to do a quick intro? Yeah. I'm Eric Thompson. I work with Zao Group, a telecommunications company out of Boulder. I'm excited to be here, excited to talk about that partnership with Salesforce and AWS. So the broad outline of the session today, there's an agenda slide, but here, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about what is the Salesforce platform? Because most people, when you say, you know, what do you know about Salesforce? The first thing they say is CRM. I mean, it's even our stock ticker. But Salesforce is about a lot more than just Salesforce automation and marketing. We have really built a, a very fully featured platform uh, that has a broad spectrum of capabilities. And I want to share just a, 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 an intro to that platform. Then I'll double click on the AWS relationship and how we've been increasing our partnership, especially uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, and then we're going to go into one specific part of the portfolio, a product line called uh, Heroku. Uh, it was a startup that was founded back in 2007 that Salesforce acquired in 2010. It's a very strategic part of the Salesforce platform that runs exclusively on AWS. And then I'm going to bring Eric back to the front, and he's going to talk a little bit about how his company uses both Salesforce and the AWS platform as part of their deployment. So with that, perhaps the most exciting slide we have you guys have incredible odds. This is like probably the best odds of the conference. If you tweet about this session over the next hour and you hashtag reInvent and hashtag Salesforce, uh, my colleague sitting in the front row here is going to be monitoring that tweet stream and we will randomly pick one of the tweeters and you will win an Oculus Rift. So fantastic opportunity. Uh, definitely promote on social media channels. Very good odds. Now, the second most exciting slide of this entire presentation, forward-looking statements. Uh, that is not a raccoon with an Oculus Rift. It's a, it's a raccoon with binoculars. But as I'm sure you all have heard, as a public company, we need you to make per any purchase decisions based on currently available products and services. We will talk about some roadmap items as part of today's session that should not influence current buying behavior. There is always risk associated with future events. Okay, with that, um, as I said, there's a, there's, a, a, there's a flow to the session. What is the Salesforce app cloud? How do Salesforce and Amazon uh, integrate? What's the benefit? Why would you choose to, to leverage the strength of both Salesforce and Amazon together? Uh, and then let's hear from Eric about how Zayo has extended their Salesforce deployment uh, onto AWS with the Heroku. Now, you might be wondering, what's this little dance party here? Uh, if you visit our booth uh, out in the expo hall, you'll also see kind of a cabin theme. You'll see a uh, Cloudy the Goat. Um, so a little over a year ago, Salesforce introduced a new engaging way to learn a new online engagement platform called Trailhead. It's a gamification of the learning process. It's a lot of fun. There are trails, there are points, there are badges, and it has been a phenomenal success. So if you leave this session saying, that was great, let me get my hands on this, I want to try it out, I want to learn about Salesforce and Heroku, you can go to trailhead.salesforce.com, you can learn about it, and in less than a year we had over a million badges earned on that platform. And so when Mark Benioff uh, looked at that, he said, you know what? This is not just the brand for online learning. This is the brand for Salesforce. We are different. We are about empowerment. We are about having fun. We are about blazing new trails. So that's why you have a little bit of a party here. Okay. So a little bit of high level positioning, right? Uh, the world has been transformed over the last decade plus. You know, first with the rise of the web and with cloud and with mobile and with social and with artificial intelligence. Right? We now have this explosion of applications and the way in which initially the consumer engaged with their business partners via companies like Amazon and Facebook uh, and, and Twitter and the like really defined a new way to interact with your, your community. Because right? you're always on, you're always connected, it's mobile, it's personalized, it's specific to you. 
And so as we start looking then at the sales and business applications, that transformational experience has carried over into the world of enterprise, right? You now have sales applications and marketing applications with one-to-one -one journeys. You have custom messaging, you have custom apps, you have IoT now exploding as a new way to engage with your environment and with your customers and partners and employees, right? And so it's really now, it's not about technology. What we really are passionate about at Salesforce is defining custom experience, engaging experience, right? So whether you are working with your employees and trying to engage them and keep them loyal and, and enthused about their jobs, whether you're engaging your partners to differentiate in the ecosystem, or whether you're trying to create customized, personalized connections with your customers, right? The experience is what matters. So that doesn't matter if a customer downloads an application and then never uses it. So what we really want to drive for is a continuously changing, personalized, engaging experience that pulls customers back, that pulls partners closer, that really energizes your employees. So the challenge with that is that if you build every application from scratch, you will end up having this massive complexity that you end up deploying into your IT. Right, because you're going to have to figure out how to integrate identity. You're going to have to figure out how to integrate data across different silos. You're going to have to figure out you know, different developer experiences, different user experiences. Uh, and so the foundation for the Salesforce platform is let us take this incredible infrastructure we built for our own SaaS applications and let you build your applications using that same shared infrastructure. You get to sh use shared identity. You can federate identity, you can do single sign-on, single sign-on not just across Salesforce apps, but across custom apps and third-party apps as well. Let us take on the burden of data integration, right? So we, as Salesforce, have become a system of record in many ways. But there's always going to be external data streams that you want to integrate as well. And so we've made it much easier to take those on-prem or other cloud-based data streams and integrate them into your engagement apps. Uh, we've taken things like trust and security off the table, right? So you heard in this morning's keynote with Andy, this transition, I think FINRA, the FINRA speaker talked about it, where we have now crossed the tipping point and we've realized that cloud-based deployments are going to be more secure and more trustworthy than private data centers, right? So Salesforce, one of our top foundational principles is around trust, right? If, if customers lost trust in Salesforce, we would lose our business. If we're a subscription model, all those customers can walk away. So we have made a huge investment in trust, and if you build on our platform, you get to get the shared benefit of that trust team, that compliance team, the data security, the redundancy, uh, the high availability, et cetera. So this is really well, all, everything that goes into the platform. So let's look at what exactly is in the platform. So my one business slide, I'm trying not to, this is, we're, we're told this is a practitioner conference, so I don't want to <coughs> bark it to you. But these are the, the foundational principles on what we try to deliver business value to our customers, right? So one is run your business on a trusted platform, so trust is absolutely essential. Another, and I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on this one, is Salesforce has been at the forefront of this low code, click to code uh, development model. So I'm gonna talk about how you can recruit additional talent into your developer ranks. Uh, by going beyond just computer science and electrical engineering graduates and going to your business analysts and to your business users and empowering them to create code via drag and drop interfaces. Delight customers with smart apps. We, we, we don't have a lot of time today, but we made a big announcement uh, earlier this year at Dreamforce around the democratization of AI with Salesforce Einstein. Uh, and last but not least, empower employees to be their best. So uh, Mark Benioff likes to say that we, are, we, like, we, we call ourselves you know, a customer-centric company, but employees are absolutely a way about how we engage with customers. Because if you can't empower and enthuse your employees, that's going to come across in your engagement with your customers as well. So this is a new graphic. We first brought this out in our developer conference uh, in June. And I like this graphic because of two key themes. The first is, I think Salesforce platform one of the key differentiators for it is the fact that we have a full spectrum for every developer model, from no code to little code to fairly complex code. But across the board, our job is to add layers of abstraction, uh, metadata, uh, developer productivity tools to allow you to get more value out of your IT investment. 
So on the one hand, on that low-code side or that no-code side, we empower your analysts and your business users to get much closer to the developer and much more involved in the app dev process. But on the other hand, with tools like Heroku, we have some you know, bleeding edge, cutting edge, continuous integration, continuous delivery tools. We have a third party ecosystem that makes it much easier to reuse components and to build custom code much more quickly. And we take on the DevOps for you so that you don't have to hire a large DevOps team to manage that infrastructure. We actually manage it for you as part of Salesforce. The other thing I like about this slide is, I'll be transparent, Salesforce has grown through both organic and inorganic means, right? We have grown via acquisition. And so historically, sometimes people thought of Salesforce as, hey, there's this force.com platform over here, and there's this Heroku platform over here, and there's this marketing cloud, cloud platform that came in from Exact Target. And that doesn't matter. The whole beauty of cloud, of cloud adoption, is the abstraction. You don't have to care where we run our code and what underlying infrastructure is running that code because we deliver services, right? So as cloud-based app architectures proliferate, we heard, again, we heard a lot about this during the keynote today, you're moving towards distributed app architectures, you're moving towards microservices, you're moving towards composability of applications across multiple stacks. And so what this slide shows you is the Salesforce platform today actually extends across a very broad spectrum of capabilities, right? We have a rich set of data warehousing and streaming data, uh, both uh, relational and unstructured data sources. We have a common identity model that we can federate across applications. We have a community site that allows you to easily empower your, your users, your employees, your customers. Uh, you know, across the spectrum, all the way to one-on-one -on -one marketing journeys, all the way over to Heroku with open frameworks and open languages. And so customers don't say, I want this widget from Salesforce or I want that widget. Increasingly, our customers say, I want the Salesforce platform. And like a painter, I'm going to take a little bit from here and a little bit from there, and I'm going to combine these services in composable applications to get the, the maximum value out of my platform. And actually, when Eric talks about Zeo Group, he's going to talk a little bit about that, because Zeo initially was a core CRM customer for Salesforce, but has increasingly embraced more and more pieces of the platform to get value. They use different parts of the platform for different kinds of applications, for different kinds of developers, and different kinds of consumption patterns. All right, so this is a architecture. It's a little glossy, I apologize. Um, but I think it does a pretty good job giving you conceptually how, to, how we think about the Salesforce platform. Right across the top, this is Salesforce as a SaaS company. We have sales, service, marketing, community, analytics, apps, et cetera. We have this UX and DX layer, the user experience and the developer experience, which is how developers create applications on our platform and how users consume those applications that have been built on our platform, right? And App Exchange is our third-party ecosystem of, of apps. Lightning is our new uh, modern web interface for the Salesforce applications. Force.com is the underlying logic tier for our sales and service cloud. Heroku is this phenomenal runtime that we built on top of AWS. We have this new layer that we built in foundationally to the platform called Einstein. This is where we can in incorporate machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing right into your applications. This is actually a place we partner with AWS. When you heard about some of the uh, AWS AI investments today, one of the things that we're working very closely with on, on is Alexa integration into the Salesforce platform, for example. And then the bottom light tier is this data and event tier. Right, Thunder is what powers our IoT cloud, again, tightly integrated with the AWS IoT service. Our, our CRM data, where we've become a system of record for our customers. Uh, email, calendar, social data, we've reached out to these external data sources and made them easily integrated into the Salesforce platform. Oops. All right, so that's great. That's my little Salesforce pitch. I'll stop selling you on Salesforce. Let's talk about why is Salesforce at reInvent? This is actually the first time we are here in full force. We've had a relationship with AWS for many years, but it just keeps growing bigger. And in fact, stay tuned. Uh, uh, there, are, there are more announcements to come about the growing AWS Salesforce relationship. The foundation is the Heroku relationship. So Heroku was founded in 2007 and has always been and is exclusively an AWS property. 100% of what you do on Heroku is deployed on top of AWS. Think of us as a way to implement best practices we're like a managed service provider on top of AWS. We give you PaaS capabilities, we give you developer productivity, but we manage the service for you. We do the patching, we do data services, we manage the largest Postgres fleet in the world, 
right? And so this is a way to get increased developer productivity, lower DevOps burden, uh, more security and compliance because we take on a lot of that for you. About a year ago, a little year and a half ago, we announced a new collaboration around our Salesforce IoT cloud. Uh, and we actually had a session yesterday. It was packed to the gills, at capacity, people interested in how Salesforce IoT cloud integrates tightly with AWS IoT. And I have a slide coming up to kind of show you the architecture, but this is a very exciting technology collaboration as well as a business go-to-market collaboration. How you can actually use AWS to ingest and manage your events and your things, but then you can build business applications on top of that using Salesforce that integrates into your CRM, your marketing, and your service activities. We have some new technology that we're actually demonstrating in our booth today, uh, this week. Uh, we'll be talking more about it. It's currently in preview. We are now integrating our Wave Analytics product uh, with AWS Redshift so that you can ingest Redshift data into our analytics platform. Very exciting. And as I alluded to already, we've been playing a lot with Alexa, and we've gotten to a point where we think it's not just for us to do demos, it's time for us to share that learning experience with our customers. So we're creating learning paths on Trailhead, and we're creating a toolkit that will accelerate how our customers can deploy Alexa as an interface to the Salesforce platform. So one brief double click on the IoT story. Um, here's again kind of the broad concept is, we do not deal, as, as Jeff Bezos, sorry, Jeff Bezos, as, as Andy Jassy talked about this morning, apologies, um, the new hybrid architecture starts with the internet of things, with these devices that are replacing the servers and data centers, right? This is a massive amount of data that is getting uploaded into the cloud. And that's not our business, that's AWS's business. They are the best cloud infrastructure for handling events coming in from that internet of things. But what we own is the business relationship. We have the 360 degree view of your customers, your partners. And so what we do is we ingest those events that come in through AWS IoT, which handles device management, device connectivity, data transformation. And we then incorporate it with a state machine that allows you to create rich, engaging customer partner experiences off of that flow of information. So it's a really strategic partnership that allows you to use AWS for IoT management, but Salesforce for business applications built on top of that data. And we have several IoT folks in our booth, and if you wanna double click on this, we're doing theater sessions, and we have some experts uh, at the conference this week that can talk about it. Okay, so for the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna now do a double click on the Heroku relationship, because I think this is the deepest way in which the Salesforce platform extends to AWS. So what is Heroku? It's a cloud application platform, you know, what many people call a, a PaaS, a platform as a service. It's been around for nine years. It actually was the first innovator in this market. It really defined this market in many ways. And so the most important priority for the Heroku experience is the developer. The developer is at the center of everything. We actually initially worked almost exclusively with startups. Today, just like with the broader public cloud adoption, we work very much with large Fortune 500 companies as well but it all starts with that developer experience. And so we have companies all the way from SMB through enterprise who don't need a DevOps IT heavy burden to manage those applications because we take on that burden for our customers. So we have customers that have one or two DevOps resources managing a large scale production application that was built on top of Heroku. Right, so we let our developers focus on what they do best, which is building custom engaging unique experiences and rapidly experimenting. We then take on the management of those applications and we patch them and we scale them and I'll show this a little bit. I'll do a quick demo of the Heroku platform. We also offer a very broad support for open languages and frameworks. We introduced this concept of the build pack. We have eight uh, officially supported build packs that we take on support for. It includes JavaScript, it includes uh, Ruby, Python, PHP, Go, uh, it can, you know, uh, .NET, you know, a broad set of uh, supported application frameworks but we also have an open community of build packs, and so virtually any language can be deployed using Heroku. You simply need to have a build pack designed around that language. Perhaps most strategically for Salesforce, a couple of years ago, we built this steel cable integration between 
the data that lives inside of Heroku and the data that lives inside of Salesforce. So we now can do either bi-directional synchronization of that data that easily allows you to integrate data from your engaging web apps that you run on Heroku with your backend CRM systems and service systems, for example. We also can support OData based uh, design by reference to improve uh, you know, performance and reduce latency and you know, allow data gravity to de define where your data lives. Uh, and it actually becomes a way to extend Salesforce into the broader universe of AWS services, right? Because when you design on Heroku, that doesn't mean you don't need AWS. You can still go to AWS. They have a 75 service catalog. Actually, after this morning, it's probably 85. I don't know. They, they announced at least 10 new services today. And the idea is you can use Heroku to manage your developer experience for your coding, for your Ruby, your Python, your, your Java code, your, your Node.js code. Uh, but then you can reach into your individual AWS services for archiving, for data migration, for Lambda functions and things like that. Double click on a few key enterprise innovations. I mentioned that Heroku initially was really focused on a B2C kind of startup kind of cu uh, customer. But as a part of Salesforce, we really wanted to industrialize Heroku for large-scale enterprise deployments. And one of the critical things we did, and it's built on top of some great AWS technology, is we built a service called Heroku Private Spaces. So this combines a lot of different discrete AWS services to build a true, compliant, segregated, network-isolated runtime. You get your own private runtime for Heroku. You get your own network perimeter, and you get to control that as a private network uh, or as a gated public network. We even do, we, we, we peer in private data services so that you're not running in a multi-tenant data environment. You can have private data services integrated in. You control the outbound IPs, you control trusted IP ranges, and you get to pick individual regions. So today we are in four regions, GA, in Tokyo, Frankfurt, Oregon, and Virginia, and we're currently in beta with Sydney. Uh, so increasingly this is a way to extend your trusted boundary onto AWS, but manage through Heroku as a compliance tier uh, that we, we take on the configuration of the VPCs and the encryption and the, uh, the, the overall perimeter of the service for you. Another really exciting innovation, and this is probably, when I talk to developers, the, the most exciting thing that's happening in Heroku today. I, I, I think this is great. You know, we've, uh, we've heard a lot about continuous integration and continuous delivery. There's lots of different point solutions, but what Heroku has done is they've built a very elegant visual flow that allows you to very easily streamline your build automation, your test automation, into a full CI CD flow, right? There's an underlying structure called Heroku Pipelines, which goes from review apps to developer to staging to production, and you can easily promote your code. It's designed to really streamline team collaboration because you can easily spin up each developer, gets their own review apps that can get spun up off of you know, GitHub pull requests, for example. And when those uh, changes are merged back in, we throw out those review apps and now you have a developer or a staging version of your application. And we just completed this flow with a brand new feature called Heroku CI. So it's in beta, we announced it at Dreamforce, where we, very close to the runtime, have fully integrated test automation suite to do CI as part of the pipeline. And what we get with that is blazing performance, right? So in our beta tests, we're just, we're getting, because we've built it right into the runtime, we're getting phenomenal performance, scalability, parallelization of the test automation with Heroku CI. See, there we just had a little race with the moped. All right, um, the last double click on feature set. I already talked about this, but Heroku Connect is a hugely strategic way in which we connect AWS with Salesforce. Right? You can create your AWS hosted applications, both natively with AWS as well as managed through the Heroku interface. And then Heroku Connect integrates that data back into your productivity apps, your SaaS apps that run, that run on the Salesforce backend, and vice versa. Right? So you can uh, manipulate data on either end of this, and we do synchronization between the two. And so it enriches that customer data. It allows you to create these very engaging customer and partner experiences. I've already sort of advertised this, but one of the important things to keep in mind is we are actually a very sophisticated AWS customer here. 
And that's one way you should think about Heroku is as a managed service provider on top of AWS. We take not just EC2 and S3, we take you know, Route 53, VPCs, ELB, CloudFront, DynamoDB, Kinesis. We take a lot of these underlying AWS services and we string them together with best practices to create a fully managed experience for you. And again, everything we do is exclusively an AWS experience, so it's a very fruitful partnership. We actually have a large army of Heroku developers attending reInvent as customers because we're a very large AWS customer. Um, some people are a little bit more visual in terms of how you think about the platform, so I did include this. I won't go through it in gory detail because I want to show a little demo before I pass the baton to Eric. But here's the, the basic concept. Heroku, built on top of AWS, developers get to write in the code of their choice, Ruby, Node, Java, Go, Python, PHP. When they deploy those applications, it's all container-based. Um, Heroku chose to use the word dyno for our runtime, but dynos are actually simply containers. They're Linux containers. These are smart containers that are fully patched and managed by Heroku. We have a third-party ecosystem. We have over 150 add-ons for things like messaging or data stores or logging or monitoring that you can easily integrate into those apps. Those apps are, you know, accessed over HTTP, WebSocket, or an API. We fully load balance this service, so we have a router that allows you to, based on a host name, uh, you know, distribute the load across all the containers running your app, easily scale up those apps horizontally and down. The other big piece is we're not just a compute platform, we again have a growing suite of data services. So historically, uh, our big uh, anchor data service was Postgres, but a little over, I think two years ago, we added Redis for caching, uh, and very recently in October, we actually launched a fully managed Kafka as a service. Uh, the, the proper name is actually Apache Kafka on Heroku, since Apache is the uh, trademark owner, I, I shorthanded it here as Heroku Kafka. Last but not least, again, this is not an either-or relationship. When you choose to work with Salesforce Heroku, you're not forced to move off of AWS. And some of our most sophisticated customers are very large AWS and Heroku customers. They use Heroku to manage that code, to leverage our data services, to integrate back into Salesforce, but they go into the native Amazon catalog to, to enrich beyond what we offer. Right? They can, again, they can go for CloudFront, for DynamoDB, for Lambda, and so we've really focused and will continue to work more closely. In fact, one of the things we're just going into beta on is VPC peering between your Amazon VPCs and your Heroku private space. So you can tightly and easily integrate your runtime securely over private network connections. So, very briefly, what's the, the top, you know, boil it down, and this is actually, it's in the data sheet that's on your chair if you want to take it. The three key benefits, you know, one is all about developer productivity, faster time to market, faster iterations, you know, we have these uh, easy one-click integrations with third-party data stores and our data stores and other services, and we also have this really elegant CI-CD flow that accelerates your development. Number two, lower your operational complexity. Right, Public cloud is way easier than private cloud deployments, but even with public cloud, you still have a lot of infrastructure bits and things that you're managing, and you have to patch it, and you take a lot of responsibility. We'll take a lot of that burden from you. We'll do the DevOps. We'll manage the runtime for you. Uh, and last, this tight integration back into Salesforce. So you don't need to use Salesforce CRM to use Heroku, but if you happen to also be a CRM customer or a marketing customer of Salesforce, this becomes, you know, a... Uh, a really exponential benefit where you can extend those sales and marketing and service apps with custom apps built on AWS with Heroku. Okay, with that, very briefly, because I want to give Eric some time, I'm, I'm not going to do a sophisticated demo, but I wanted to give you just a little bit, a peek into what exactly does this all look like. So let's see if I remember my login. The, I will apologize, the Wi-Fi is not blazing fast. So this will be a little bit in slow motion, but that's okay. Heroku enforces complex passwords, so they're very long for security. There we go. Now, full disclosure, I am not a code jockey. They're gonna see my account and they're gonna laugh. I don't have a whole lot of code that I've built here. Luckily, there's some great team collaboration capabilities for Heroku. So here I have my little trailhead Node.js app. I'm not going to even bother looking at that. I'm going to go ahead. You know who builds great apps? 
that Heroku SC team. So let's go into the Heroku SC account. I think they are going to have much more interesting things to look at. All right, they've got lots of different things. Let's go look at my cool web app. Right, so this is a web app that's running. It doesn't have lots of activities, so you're going to see some metrics here. They're not going to blow you away. Like this gives you a sense. I've logged in. What's the overview? You know, what's the response time, the throughput, the memory? How much am I paying? What are the third-party add-ons? What's the log of activity against this account? Who are the collaborators that are working on this project with me? Let's say I want to go change what I've deployed. Let's go to resources. Over here, I very easily, for example, if I click on edit, I can take my dynos, which are my compute containers, my compute runtime, and I can very easily scale it up. Right? Now, this is manual. Uh, we have some metrics that can guide you, but I'm about to show you something very exciting that's in beta that you know, will complete this. But before I move off of this screen, let's go look at add-ons. So in this application, I've added Heroku Postgres. I've added some third-party applications as well, you know, uh, a logging tool from PaperTrail, Librato. I also have Redis. But you know what? I want to go add something. So if I go click the Find More Add-ons, this will take me directly into the add-on marketplace. And as I mentioned, over 150 add-on providers, data stores, monitoring, logging, caching, search, metrics, testing, very rich ecosystem, one-click integration to pull into my Heroku application. All right, I'm not going to change this. It's not really my application. But let's go look on metrics. Now, there's some rich data here uh, around events, around memory usage, around response time, around compute consumption with the dyno load. But you'll also see we've got some beta stuff. And the really interesting one, I just want to quickly point out, it is beta. This is our roadmap disclosure. You'll see threshold auto scaling. So we currently are in beta. We've been building performance metrics for these applications, and we now are testing out auto scaling so we can scale up and scale down independently. You don't need to manually go change those configurations. Uh, briefly, let me show you access. So one of the key foundations of the Heroku platform is team collaboration. You can see this isn't my account, but I was invited in, and I can add additional people as collaborators, as admins with view, deploy, operate, and manage rights. Fairly fine grain access controls into these applications. Okay, one last thing, and then I'm going to introduce Eric back to the stage. So I talked about Flow. I'm not going to, I don't have a GitHub account. Like I said, I'm not an actual developer, but let me show you what it looks like. Let's go to my cool pipeline. So this actually was listed as five applications, even though it's a single production app. And the reason is because I have this rich application pipeline. Right Over on the right, I have my production app. One level back, I have my staging app. Right, And if I'm ready to push that, well, first of all, if I click here, I can go open a version of that staging app and go test it and performance and you know, share, look at the features, et cetera. Once I have uh, you know, signed off on all those capabilities, one click push to production, right? I click this button, it's now been moved over into production. I go back a further stage, here's my development app. And again, if I click here, I can test out the functionality of it, I can share with my collaborators. With Heroku CI, which is coming, I can run automated test scripts against that build. And again, easel one, one, kick, one click promotion into staging. This last part, review apps, is really where the GitHub integration works. So if I attached my GitHub account to this, every time I did a pull request on this code, I would automatically spin up a new review app, an ephemeral app, which I can very easily share or run tests against. Uh, if I merge that pull request, depending on my configuration, I can either manually manage that review app or I can configure it so that it automatically blows up that review app so I'm not wasting you know, compute instances, and I can easily just pull, pull it into my development branch. So this is really cool, it's really visual, it's easy to understand, and it's just it's a huge developer productivity. And so with that, I'll stop there, because like I said, I'm not an actual developer, so I'm not gonna try faking it, and instead I'm gonna pass the baton over to Eric. All right, and I'm also uh, not a developer, but um, we do have a big development shop which has been um, kind enough to, to tee up some of this um, for Zao. A quick show of hands in the room. Um, how many folks are familiar with uh, Zao Group or have heard the name? Okay, we've got a couple. Any folks out here from uh, Colorado? All right. We're going to walk through, talk to, just a little bit of background, kind of what is Zao Group, what do we do, why are we here talking with Salesforce, um, talk through our Heroku implementation, and then ultimately um, try to give you a couple options to find us if you want more information. Um, so Zao Group is a telecommunications, uh, global telecommunications provider 
out, headquartered out of Boulder, Colorado. They were founded in 2007, um, 10 folks above a pizza shop, and now are a you know, market cap just short of $9 billion. Um, dollars. We are on net in almost 25,000 um, buildings and have nearly 9, mile, 9 million um, fiber miles. Our product mix has been uh, mostly dark fiber and um, kind of connectivity options, but we continue to expand in the private cloud, hybrid cloud, and um, co-location space. Our customer mix, um, which I'll get into here a little bit, has been changing over time, um, and Salesforce has been kind of one of the original customers and vendors for us. That being said, we are a global provider. Um, we have a dense metro footprint in most major markets in the U.S., um, in London and France. We're the largest fiber provider that crosses the uh, Canadian border, so um, a lot of data governance concerns we've been targeting there. And um, while we may not have a huge metro presence across large markets in the world, we do have a global reach team, which can pretty much connect you anywhere you need to go. That being said, our customer mix uh, originally were a kind of a carrier 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 of carriers, and we've been expanding out of that into the enterprise space. So your Apple's, Facebook's, Amazon, Salesforce, Dropbox is really becoming that meat, as well as um, folks with data privacy concerns in the financial or government markets have been a, a growing part of that. <coughs> what the reason that let's see if I can get a switch here. Did we break it? Yeah, we might have broken <laughs> it. That's all right. Um, wonderful. Oops. All right, we're going to reboot that. That's a cute kid. Yeah, that's my baby. Aww. Get in there. Um, so the reason that we adopted Salesforce, we acquired a company called VoicePipe early on. Um, I think it was 2008, 2009. They were using that CRM tool. And what we realized pretty quickly is that if you don't have your data with one single source of truth, um, it is very, very hard to quote and sell um, to quote and sell connectivity services. And what we realized from there is that if we allowed these legacy, interesting. Here, let me try driving. Yeah, it just keeps on closing on me. Um, see if you can pull it up. Yeah. So we have a 39 acquisitions, actually 40 this morning, so our slide with 39 was outdated, but um, through 40 acquisitions, you get a lot of legacy systems, legacy data, and when you're trying to quote across um, products from 40 companies, um, it's nearly impossible if you're trying to talk across all those systems. So the company made a strategic decision early on to say everything is going to live in Salesforce. Um, we're going to kill off any application that doesn't uh, very cleanly, that doesn't very cleanly um, tie back into Salesforce, and we really have stuck to it. So when we acquire a company, it's not an integration decision of if, it's when. And if that data can't move into Salesforce, um, it is not likely to be a key product offering of ours, or it is a timed countdown until that data system um, dies off. With Salesforce being that kind of uh, single point of data entry and exit, what we realize is that um, quoting telecom services, which used to be, you know, one to two to three week RFPs, as long as you have the data in one place, it's really not that complex to achieve. Um, the complexity isn't so much in the quoting, because you're either on net or you're not, and there's a build cost, but it's really in getting that data together and getting it to sit in one place. Um, that led our CEO to host an internal hackathon where he said, what if, we, what if we could turn around a quote in 30 seconds? How would that be possible? This can't be that complicated. Um, a team came together, they put together the Transact quoting platform, which we're going to walk through, which is built on Heroku, and they got seventh place, nearly last in the hackathon, but the CEO decided to give it some legs, and they built this internal app, trying to make our marketplace to purchase telecom um, services as easy as buying shoes online. Wrong computer. Oh, wrong computer. The, that footprint um, now goes everything from lead to quote to cash. Um, our... Salesforce, we have over 80 Salesforce and Heroku developers. Our CIO sits on Salesforce's uh, CIO board, and our CEO, um, even today in the announcement with our most recent acquisition, said directly that Salesforce.com was going to be the reason that we were going to be able to make this integration as fast as we are. And we will um, integrate that company within one to two months. It's how we do every single one. Um, and Salesforce also kind of put their, uh, put their money where the mouth is. They, they build their um, infrastructure on our bandwidth infrastructure and have been a kind of great customer and partner, um, giving us lots of opportunities to talk together through these things. 
the why, why Heroku. So we originally built our application on uh, force.com page and we still have a ton of information that lives on force.com. That's by no means going away. But what we realized is that as we got into the cloud and colo space, that some of the complexity of what we were trying to quote to was not quite, was not quite fast enough and was kind of harming the customer experience. Um, we had some portability issues, um, kind of having it all sit in one place. Uh, synchronous execution, when you scale from 10 developers to 80, all trying to be in the playground at the same time is not very possible. And made the strate strategic decision to say, okay, we're gonna move this to Heroku, we're gonna keep the features alive in force.com, but we need a fast customer experience, we need to be able to change it quickly. Our developers wanna be able to code in kind of the newest um, technologies, and um, we are gonna have this seamlessly integrate. What we're gonna demo here is what that customer experience looks like, as well as how quickly you move back and forth between Heroku and communities and things like that um, with really no, no exper noticeable experience difference to the customer or internally. That being said, I'm gonna launch into a demo here. So if you, um, we give this login to any of our customers, it's in our internal portal that we use for all of our quoting and it's also what our customers use to uh, purchase and kind of manage their services with us. Um, we have a big data team that's real fast at getting uh, companies active, so if you'd like to see your company in this and you'd like to see your sites and test it out live, if you come up and find me afterward or stop by our booth, within 24 hours we can have you quoting in this portal. It, it's that quick. Um, a couple of highlights. So this is designed to look a lot more like kind of a travel experience. So we're gonna go by uh, kind of destinations, which is gonna be our product. Um, anything from cloud, uh, dark fiber, which is really a market differentiator uh, for Zao that we allow you to control um, and own that fiber. And all the way to uh, live video, Flex Connect, and um, IP services. For this example, what we're gonna do is just walk through what we have, uh, our partnership with AWS is a direct connect to their cloud instance. So even though we have a cloud offering, uh, you can go on and get a direct connection, um, secure connection to AWS Cloud. We're gonna select an account here so that I don't get a sales rep excited about some um, <laughs> quote that's not actually happening. So it's pretty simple. So you click uh, Ethernet, we're gonna go point to point. And keep in mind, this is the process I was describing that used to take one to two weeks for an RFP. Um, first location, we're just gonna select our headquarters in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Click that address. For the second location, you're gonna go into our cloud exchange here. And I should, I should mention, this is uh, internally, this is live internally now and it's gonna go live externally in January uh, for this. We do have a version right now that doesn't have the cloud option, but in uh, January this will all be available. We'll select a uh, AWS location in Northern California. Um, I'll note this is a test account, so any kind of pricing you see is just uh, it's test, test gibberish at this point. Um, if we select a one, a one gig connection, um, you select which floor you wanna go in on, specifically if you have preferences, and within on slow Wi-Fi, Within about 10 seconds, you actually have a quote. Uh, you can create the opportunity from here. You select your, your term that you're interested in, and, um, and it actually kicks off a DocuSign process to the customer, and you can sign it. This can be done within um, five minutes, kind of beginning to end. If you have kind of a more complex arrangement, maybe you have uh, 20 sites you're trying to connect, it kicks off in a process that we run internally, and we can turn that around in four hours throughout this process. Um, it's only real kind of large complex deals that need to go outside of that. The other things our customers can do in here, um, and this is all tying back to our database that lives in Salesforce, is you can go look at your in-process orders. Um, they can do a pizza tracker to show where it is. So this has been submitted, but it hasn't been accepted or been delivered. So you can kind of pizza track across all of your customer activity. Uh, you can go into open tickets, open support tickets, um, go view all of your invoices, or if you kind of want to manage and see your network, this is where we're going to jump right back into force.com. Um, you can go into my sites, which is um, the former platform this used to be built on on force.com. Type in your account information. And not only do you have access to see where all of your sites are, you get to see if they're on net, you can see the services that are on those sites, and you can also go into analytics. So your customer can see where 
they have spend in the US, uh, which products they're buying, and then flow right back into um, shopping on the Transact 3.0 experience. I'm gonna kick it back to um, kick it back to you, Angelo. So there's or one more slide, and then I'll kick it back to you. Like I said, if you want if you want to kind of rehash that, if you want to take a look at what this look would look like for your company, uh, please just stop by the booth. Um, and then I have one more. So small. Oh, oh, oh man, that were there. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so we're at booth uh, two three four seven. Come by. We're giving away two Amazon gift cards a day. Um, and then if you want to kind of have a friend at Zayo, uh, if you want to get connected with our executive team, our CIO, uh, Sandy Mays, is the Salesforce evangelist for our company. Um, send her a tweet right now. Just uh, You don't have to say you love the session, but send her a tweet um, if you have any interest in following up on Transact or having a, a friends and family kind of connection at Zayo. With that, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, so first of all, here's your last chance to tweet with the hashtag reinvent in Salesforce. Our Oculus Rift giveaway is about to conclude. So in summary, Salesforce and Amazon, better together. We are strategically allied all the way at the executive level as innovators, right? I mean, we define the SaaS market, Amazon define the infrastructure market. We can collaborate very closely. Uh, we are, we've announced an alliance, uh, and we're gonna be announcing more details very shortly. We, in the spring, announced that we were selecting Amazon as our preferred infrastructure provider for global expansion. Uh, we do have a booth on the floor upstairs 2046. We have some great giveaway items. We've got some great uh, tchotchkes and assets and things like that. And two last things before we wrap up. The first, and I did the same thing, went to the wrong computer, is time to give away an Oculus Rift. So Rahul, drum roll. So stop by our booth 2046 and you'll pick up the Oculus Rift. Your name has been noted. So thank you, here's our Twitter accounts. And please take some time to complete the evaluations. Now like I said, we appreciate your persistence in finding us after the time change. We do invite you to invite your colleagues to join us tomorrow when we will have a repeat. Thank you very much. Oh. We have time for questions, but it's a pretty intimate group, so rather than doing large scale, just come on up and let's talk. I don't think we need to do uh, in front of everybody. Thank you.